into this game between Duke and Carolina. Part of Throwdown Thursday. This, of course, may be the biggest game of the ball in the rival week, presented by Cisco Systems. And amazingly enough, we have had a ton of turnovers already. Two on Duke, two on North Carolina. A minute and 23 seconds into the game. Sheldon Williams with the only basket of the night. And Roy Williams, Dick, this is his first time as a part of this rivalry as a head coach. It is one of the great rivalries of all of sports. Bottom line is you think about great rivalries in college basketball. This is the head of the class. Duke has won 12 of the last 14. And J.J. Redick gets free for a three and it's five nothing blue devils as we have yet another turnover so mike krzyzewski has to love what he's seeing from his team they've only lost once that was to purdue back in november they're the number one ranked team in the country seven consecutive years they've been number one at some time but remember this they have lost to carolina five times during coach k's era as a number one team in america rashad mccann's with a steal and then he is fouled by duhan roy williams in his first year as head coach here at his alma mater north carolina he beat mike krzyzewski and duke just last year at kansas in the sweet 16. A little different lineup in that game. You had two guys by the name of Heinrich and yeah. Collison. Collison, as you look at the lineup right here for North Carolina, Collison had 33 points, 19 rebounds, and Heinrich just stymied. I mean, he stymied J.J. Redick. Redick in that game was 1 for 12 shooting threes. McCants at the line looking to get North Carolina going. And they will finally get a point. Two minutes in. Let's check the Duke lineup. And the wall dang in the starting lineup. We're going to see Sean Dockery and Chandler Randolph off the bench for Duke. Neither team, Dick, will probably go much deeper than seven. Well, the bottom line is when you look at North Carolina, defense has been there. Nemes, they have really not played well on a defensive end in the ACC. In fact, in the ACC, Dan, teams are shooting better than 50% against North Carolina. They cannot allow Duke to shoot better than 50% and have a chance to win. J.J. Redick doing a nice job drawing the foul on Melvin Scott. Redick, the best free throw shooter maybe in the country. 69 out of 71 so far this year. We asked him what his secret is on the line when I go to the free throw line uh, all I'm saying to myself is, it, is it, this shot is going in um, I go ahead and do my routine uh, I have the same routine every time three spins and three dribbles and actually everybody thought it was on Melvin Scott it was on Reddick it was a charge That was not on Reddick, it was on Scott. I guess they called it before the shot. It looked like he was up in the air, and he was trying to get a shot off, but they said it was down on the floor. Tough call if you're Duke. Yeah, it was prior to the shot. Yeah. We're way up here, Dan. We're, People have to we're know we're the way rafters. Up, and we're on the baseline. We're not yeah. even at center court. Dang draws the double team. Now the fadeaway, a little bit short, and the rebound for Sean May, who in a game earlier this year had 21 rebounds for the Tar Heels. Well, you know, North Carolina, one of the great offensive teams in America, third in the nation in scoring points they just have to defend on the other side Duke's strong point is their defense their commitment they have allowed teams not to get into the 60s it's amazing they give it up about 59 points a game boy Carolina plagued by turnovers four already 55th time these teams have met when they're both ranked in the top 25 they are dead even last year in this building as an unranked team North Carolina defeated Duke by three but later on they lost to them in the ACC tournament semifinals Duhon driving and the rebound to May again nobody rotated over Duhon should have had an easy layup in that scenario now the pull up jumper from just inside the line a little bit strong for Felton rebound McCants Felton an outstanding point guard McCants a big scorer he is leading the ACC in score at 18.9 and his numbers even get higher if you just evaluate him in ACC competition but Dang. 21 a game Dang at the other end beats Jawad Williams to the basket one of the real problems for North Carolina they don't rotate over and give help defense is a team commitment people have to help one another and right there's another example of Dang getting to the basket and nobody rotating over Foul on Williams. Let's check out the Star Watch. Two point guards, Dick, as good at quarterbacking a team as anybody in the country. Well, you're not going to win big without great quarterback play and guys that really are an extension of the coach. Both guys do it a little differently. Felton is a dynamite guy in penetration, creating opportunities. 
but doesn't play off the ball defensively as well as Duhon, who plays the ball tough and plays well off the ball. Well, one of the keys in a game like this always take the crowd out of the game. Duke's off to a pretty good start in that regard. McCants, an open jumper from the baseline, 8-3, Duke. He has become a big-time scorer. Really has gotten the effect of right after the Kentucky game. Had a meeting with Roy Williams. They were very unhappy as you look at the field goal numbers here with his play prior to that. But he's been a different player offensively. J.J. Redick and a block by Jackie Manuel, and now he's going to get an easy one to the other end. But he deserves it. He made the block shot. He's a defensive player. They got a match up on Redick. And that creates up the ball. Look at the blue in the house tonight, baby. And it's Carolina blue, not Duke blue. You and off to Reddick trying to create a little bit of space, and he turns it over. Now it's McCants. Oh, Jam City. A little D down there. They have really played D the last two possessions. What a turnaround in the last minute and a half. Well, Coach K told us, he said, we're going to get that best defensive effort tonight. They turn it over again. Carolina gets it back. Who said they can't play D? Who said they can't play D? How a team shooting better than 50% in the ACC at that zone? Roy Williams has got to really be pleased with their defensive effort early, Dad. Coming up, how the Heels have done against number ones. PN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, presented by the Mass Mutual Financial Group. You can't predict, you can prepare. And in part by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. And Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Well, no matter what anybody says, this is not just another game on the schedule. Throwdown Thursday, presented by Mass Mutual, maybe the biggest game of the rivalry week, presented by Cisco Systems. Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale with you. Not only is it Duke in Carolina, but Duke comes in ranked number one in the country. What does this game mean? Well, you know, Dan, 12 times they've been number one in America, playing against North Carolina under the guidance of Coach K. They have beaten North Carolina seven of the 12 times. They have lost five times when being number one against the Tar Heels. Man, this place is special. It's been absolutely dynamite here for the last two hours. Fans really getting into it. North Carolina and UCLA. More wins over number one teams than anybody else in the history of college basketball. Don't forget Carolina knocked off Connecticut earlier this year on this floor when they were number one. They've been very effective at home. The problem's been away from home. Boy, Sean May, a couple of golden opportunities, and he couldn't convert. You know what? And he usually gets frustrated when he misses easy opportunities, yep. and he breaks down defensively. Hey, don't forget, they not only beat Connecticut, they beat Georgia Tech here. They beat North Carolina State here. Had a great win last night with that comeback over Wake Forest. May with another rebound. Finds Manuel, who's really given them a spark off the bench. David Noel. And his four-footer won't go down. David Noel was out here along with Melvin Scott about 6 o'clock. I asked him, I said, how big is this game? He said, this is what you come to North Carolina for. You dream of the matchup against those guys from Durham, North Carolina. Duke was up 8-1, to one, a 6-0 run right now for the Tar Heels. Dane draws the double team and scores right over the top. You talk about versatility. He had that big game in that comeback against Georgia Tech. 22 and 10 rebounds. Five for Lowell Dang, Duke leading by three. Duke 18 and one, Carolina 13 and five as Carolina turns it over again. That was their biggest problem the first three or four minutes of the game. 0 oh, and three, Roy Williams' club in the ACC on the road. As you look at the turnover numbers, both clubs with five. Duke is forcing about 17 turnovers a game, and they're blocking shots at a record rate. The record is 6.3 a game. Back during the Elton Grand era, this club is going at 7.3. Sean Dockery, Shavlik Randolph on the floor for Duke. Randolph with a nice fake. Crowd thought he traveled. And Duke retains possession with plenty of time on the clock. Randolph has really been effective. He was effective against Georgia Tech, against Florida State. They had a tough game with Leonard Hamilton's club. Now the shot clock down to seven. Duhon forcing his way inside. And a fresh 35 now for the Blue Devils, and Dockery's going to pull it out. The one breakdown for North Carolina is they're allowing too much penetration. They're allowing the guys to beat them off the dribble and get in the lane. 
Duhon gets inside, has it blocked. Reddick fires a bullet into Randolph inside, and it goes in. Nice look by Reddick. They're getting too many guys and opportunities in that three-second area, man. Well, to seven, Duke. Last two buckets have gone to the Blue Devils after the 6-0 run by the Tar Heels. Duke alone at, at the top of the ACC. NC State. Don't count them out. Six and two. Carolina needs a win to stay in the pack. Well, I'll tell you this. Herb Sendick's done a great job with that NC State team. Julius Hodge has really played well. Marcus Melvin, a very dangerous basketball team who had a great opportunity to beat North Carolina here, but the Heels were able to hang on. Big play by McCants at the end helped. Melvin Scott for three. He was working on that three, man. If you work, a lot of good things are going to happen. He was out here at 6 o'clock working on that jumper. Players got out here. Some of them, as Dick said, three hours early in anticipation of this monster game tonight here in Chapel Hill. Dang, very assertive early offensively. And he draws the foul, pulling his way to the bucket. You know, Monday, you and I saw, as you look at Coach K, we saw Charlie Villanueva. He played with Dang in high school. You and Villanueva, Villanueva is going to be a special player at UConn. The foul on Byron Sanders of North Carolina. Dang already with five points. Heads to the line for the Blue Devils. What a freshman season he is having. He saw the standings, and I firmly believe the ACC in the last two years have had four teams in the tournament. I've got to believe they're going to get seven this year. Maryland's going to find a way and win enough games to get in, and certainly Florida State with what they have done, beating Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Wake Forest. In your opinion, hands down, the strongest league in the country this oh, year? Oh, without question. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Dang misses a couple of free throws. Carolina can tie or take the lead on this trip. I think McCants has got to take advantage of his ability to post inside. We've said it so often that he likes to play on a perimeter and can shoot the three, but he's also a very effective low post player as well. North Carolina turns it over yet again. Six already, and Duke, of course, when you think of Duke, you think of the defense before you think of the offense. They're holding teams under 60 points per game this season. Let's look inside Williams, and Duke goes up by four. Can't allow him to get that kind of position down and deep. Williams has certainly been a major factor all year, giving him balance. Great drive by Felton, frees up May for the easy deuce. Yeah, first points of the game. He's as good as anybody in America with penetration. He's thrown in a nation and says, and if he gets penetration and you give help, it's a layup. 14-12, Duke, more than eight minutes in. Nice lob inside, Sheldon Williams, and he will go to the line. He has really improved as a player. He's become such an effective interior player, and that just helps the perimeter game of Duke. It stretches the defense as well. Sean May is called for the foul, his first. Team fourth. How big is the battle between Sheldon Williams and Sean May tonight? Well, you and I, we were talking to Roy Williams about it, and he agreed it's one of the major battles inside today. Because when you look at North Carolina, if May gets in foul trouble, they have no bench strength in terms of depth with size. Noel very strong, but only 6'6. Jawad Williams a little bit slender, whereas Duke has Sheldon Williams and Shavlik Randolph. Rashad McCants back in for the Tar Heels. Well, the Tar Heels beat Connecticut. They were number one in America. They, along with UCLA, have ten victories against number one teams to lead the nation. Maryland is at number nine at number two. But they've beaten Connecticut, Georgia Tech, NC State, Illinois. Bottom line is this club is very capable of beating anyone with the offensive firepower. If they ever commit defensively, whoa. Duke up by four on the road here at Chapel Hill. Carolina down by four. They got some tough news on the recruiting front yesterday. James Ott Curry, the state of North Carolina's all-time leading scorer, has run into some legal trouble. With the details on that, here's our own Andy Cash. Andy? Thanks, Dan. That's right. Curry was arrested on his high school's campus at Eastern Alamance High and charged with drug charges, drug possession and selling. And right now, North Carolina has not made up its mind whether or not they're going to retain his scholarship, whether or not they're going to honor it. As of now, though, they are one scholarship over, so this might actually solve a problem for the Tar Heels. They signed four players in the fall. They only had three scholarships available. 
They may obviously solve the problem here with this issue. They'll make up their mind within the next month if they're on the massage. Danny Dick? I'll tell you one thing. Andy is certainly innocent until proven guilty. Bottom line is my gut feeling is he will never, ever wear a North Carolina uniform. And that's sad in a way. You wonder the thinking process of these young kids who have such opportunities and such a chance to make a name for themselves at a prestigious school. But as we said, he's certainly innocent until proven guilty. Seventh turnover committed by North Carolina. A five by Duke, so both teams maybe a little bit too pumped up for this big game here in the opening minutes. Oh, there's so much emotion. We feel it. I mean, we make mistakes. They make mistakes. <laughs> there's turnovers. Oh, we're going to backdoor cut. Dockery inside to Ewing, and again, Duke is going to get to the line. Ewing is a forgotten guy, but not to the coach at Duke. He is so effective. And tomorrow night, the NBA season continues with a doubleheader on ESPN. The evening begins with a Kia NBA shootaround at 7.30 Eastern, then at 8. Tracy McGrady of the Magic take on Jason Kidd of the Nets at 10.30 Eastern Time rating NBA MVP. Tim Duncan of the Spurs against the high-flying Sacramento Kings. Let me clarify what I mean there. As we look at Grant Hill, let's wish him the best. You talk about a classy guy. Hope that ankle gets better and he can get in a uniform. He's told me so many times whenever I met him, his greatest years of his life as a player were right at Duke University. But I want to tell you what I mean about Daniel Ewing. When I say forgotten guy, I mean, so much attention is due on and read it. Yeah. You hear about them all the time. And this guy is like a silent assassin. He had 15 against the Georgia Tech off the bench. Very effective three-point shooter. One of the best in America. MVP of the ACC tournament last year. Both of these teams have so many different players who can hurt you. Both teams have all five starters averaging in double figures. Boy, North Carolina is missing some chances right around the basket. And that's Mr. May again, who's having a great night rebounding at seven rebounds already, but is missing some easy shots inside, and that usually gets in very down, and it affects his game. He's shooting down around 35%, Dick, in the last five games, and he's just one for five tonight. Duhon, and he turned it over. Numbers for Carolina. And they turn it right back over to Duke. A three-on-one chance goes for Knott. Boy, Williams shaking his head because normally they're one of the great transition teams in America. I think the three best that I've witnessed is certainly with Connecticut and you think of Arizona and North Carolina. We're here with the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill along with the Dick Vitale and Andy Katz. I'm Dan Schulman. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems. Look at the turnover trouble for both teams, especially North Carolina, as Roy Williams goes even deeper into his bench. Rayshon Terry is in and really the big story early dick north carolina's inability to convert easy chances well they had opportunities inside and they have not taken advantage but look at this opportunity i mean you can't allow that to happen you got to make a commitment to defense the difference in these two clubs is duke has made a commitment to defense whether they win or lose here tonight when you look at them the entire season they have committed on the defensive end as a team where North Carolina has it. Felton misses the floater. Follow tap, no good. And now Duke comes back in transition. Ready to play. Williams. Another way up. Simple give and go. You can't play defense like that, Dan, and beat a club of this quality. Well, Roy Williams has been frustrated and vocally frustrated about his team's lack of defense and commitment at times this season. And in speaking with him before the game, it's February. He's, he's still trying to instill that commitment. They had that at Kansas two years ago. They led the nation in field goal percentage defensively. Take a look right here. Dump inside. Easy layup. Man, I can make that layup if I can get the ball in deep. Now, here's an opportunity. you got to convert that. Wow. you got to convert that. Our producer would make that with no trouble, Mr. Belt. I know he can't wait to get it home this weekend. He'll be producing the game with Arizona and Stanford. Saturday afternoon, 3 Eastern, part of the regional coverage on ABC. 10-point lead for Duke largest of the night crowd I think booing the officials but the officials are not the problem for the Tar Heels right now well the one thing that's happened with the early Duke lead as you alluded to earlier it has a way to flatten that crowd out and that's what it's done here Sheldon Williams give him a dozen points how improved is this guy from last he's year? really improved but nobody's denying the ball inside they're up by 12 getting the ball inside at ease May inside and finally gets one to go in I would love to play with Raymond everybody loves Raymond 
I mean, if you get open, he's going to lay the rock right on your hands. Mr. Falcon, one of the premier point guards of the nation. Third in the country in assists at almost eight per game. That bucket ended a 10-0 run by Duke. The wall dang the pull up from 18. Rebound made. He's going to have some big numbers on the glass tonight. Ray Sean Terry, but the biggest number, North Carolina turnovers. They give it away yet again. There's a little jump shot. Look at the block out right here. Great block out. That is an unbelievable block out. You keep your man between you and the basket. Really a super job. That's fundamentally just solid blocking He's out. He's got nine rebounds already. And now Duke. We got an offensive foul down low. Dane trying to establish position. Poor job as we look at the rebound totals with the angle to make that entry. Very similar to what we saw the other night in the last minute of the game with Kentucky That's where right. Christian Dreyer tried to make that pass and didn't have the angle. Sheldon Williams unstoppable down low. Sean May getting lots of rebounds but unable to handle Williams. And this was seen as one of the key battles in the game along with the battle of the point guards when they're on each other. Duhon and Felt. I think that Daniel Ewing is one of the most underrated players in America. So solid on a perimeter. Got a bump now on the guy you're just talking about, Ewing. His Felt tried to explode right by him. Bottom line is, as a team, you have to play defense as a unit. And that's what they do up at Stanford. There is right now Felton trying to come over. Ewing bumps him. He can't believe it, but he definitely did. Duhon right now is on the camps. He told us now before the game. Knocks right into the ground. So we've got a number of different guys on the camps. Look at May working inside. I tell you, he is working hard. There is no doubt about it. He's had some tough luck around the basket, but he has given a supreme effort. Maybe listen to Michael Jackson music before the game. <laughs> Helps to relax him. Yeah, warming up with his uh, headphones on, listening to some tunes. He told me he's listening to Michael Jackson. Look at Williams. In and close again, but this time he missed. And the rebound to Carolina. Just getting the ball inside too easily. Scott coming off the screen. May knocked away. Numbers for Duke. Duhon leading the break. Ewing on the wing for three. They run in their transition game. One of the first options is to get to the three-point line with Reddick or with Ewing. Man, could they flat out shoot it from out there, those two guys? The lead is back up to 11. Nice crossover by Felt. And the offensive rebound for Felt throws it right back up and in. They retired to New Jersey down in Atlanta, South Carolina. Terrific point guard had his number retired. What a thrill for a youngster. All does this crowd want it? All does this crowd want it? They just need a little help from their buddies. There's the guy who's been the man inside in this game, Sheldon Williams, turning on May. Duhon thought about it, and good anticipation there by Felton as he knocks it out of bounds. Duke will retain possession as we step aside. The visiting Blue Devils are up by nine. is the 216th meeting between Duke and North Carolina. The first game is believed to have been back in January of 1920 when Duke was known as Trinity College. They took on Carolina. Here's when you know you got a good rivalry. They can't even agree on who won the game back in 1920. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Well, so you know, between these two schools, they give out what's called the Carlisle Trophy. It's incredible. A $5,000 trophy. It's gorgeous. And it goes to the school that gets the most points in 23 sports. And the three major sports, men's basketball, women's basketball, and football, you get two points. All the other sports, you get one. And two of the last three years, a big trophy is in Durham, North Carolina. And the Duke Blue Devils with a nine-point lead right now. Sheldon Williams, the high score with a dozen. And Duhon draws the foul. That is an unpopular call here in Chapel Hill as Jackie Manuel is called for the foul. His second. Duhon's having a phenomenal year. An orchestra leader, Gonzaga, one of my teams to go to the Final Four with Blake Stepp and Mr. Turioff. Take on Pepperdine. Oh, Paul, I mean, you talk about Paul Westfall, man. That's a player, but unfortunately, he can't put the uniform on. <laughs> Throw down Thursday tonight, presented by Mass Mutual, continues tonight at 11 Eastern here on ESPN2. Two more inside points for Duke. Lowell Dang now with seven, and the lead is back at a double digits. What really makes Duke so 
so effective is the great balance they have. Nice backdoor cut. And Manuel finishes strong. Nice backdoor cut. Good, good new player staring at the basketball. Ran that backdoor cut. We're going to see it right here. He's going to run right here. Right to that door cut. There it is. Rotating over a little bit slow. And there's the layup on the inside. He gets the great angle. Angles are so important in trying to execute and getting that backcourt door cut. You know, Jackie Manuel last year was settling for a lot of outside jump shots, and Roy Williams said, hey, listen, you're not a shooter. Now look at that field goal percentage. He went from 38% last year to 58% this year because instead of shooting threes, he's attacking the basket. Well, my buddy Mike Patrick was sitting down right now, sitting out in Hawaii. He said it best. He said he's finally learned that he's not a long red shooter. <laughs> hey, Mike, have one on me, baby, down there in Hawaii. <laughs> If you got to miss this game, Hawaii is a pretty good place to be. Huh? No, 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 I'd rather be here. Raddick has it blocked. This is better than Hawaii. Are you kidding me? Shavlik Randolph has it blocked. They're not going to go away. Duke's going to have to earn this baby here tonight. Noel looking inside. Sean May again. Great post position inside. Mr. Schumann, they're not going to go away. This crowd will not allow them to go away. They can feel the adrenaline of the crowd. You play off that adrenaline. 30 second timeout taken by Mike Krzyzewski and Duke. A couple of buckets for Carolina to get back within seven. As we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball, it's time to flash back into the ESPN. If you have not been watching this game all night with us, this has been marvelous. Oh! Remember that man vividly. In fact, Mike Patrick has a great story. I stood up when he hit that shot, and I banged my head up at Duke in the court on this unbelievable cement block, and my head stopped bleeding. And Mike said, "It didn't bother you bleeding, and you still stay there calling the game." Another rebound for May. That's his 11. You play hurt, huh? Oh, well, you got to be a warrior, man. <laughs> Carolina trying to make a bit of a move, get back with nice. seven. And Noel, oh, a couple of bounces, won't go down, but Noel is going to go to the line as Carolina's doing a great job getting inside now. Well, you know, Dan, you look at Roy Williams' numbers. I mean, it's no accident that he's brought a buzz here. Bottom line, he's the winningest active coach out there, 431 and 106. That's over 80% of game. That's number three at all time winning this coach behind Claire B, the former LIU superstar, and Adolph Ruff. 15 seasons at Kansas, four Final Fours, nine conference titles. Are you serious? I mean, that's incredible. He's done an amazing job. He was 10 years here as an assistant coach. Bob Frederick, you got to give all the credit in the world at Kansas for giving him an opportunity, having on his resume assistant coach. Back on their feet here to the Dean Dome, a 6-0 run for Carolina. Dang. Williams, maybe a push off to come up with a rebound, and Duke's got it back. What range this guy's got. Ran it for three. He just shot that from Durham, North Carolina, man. He shot that from eight miles out of here. Incredible range, the best range of any shooter in a country. If I talk about best shooters, you think about certainly Chris Hill of Michigan State, Ben Gordon, a Connecticut, Novak, Salim Stoudemire, who I'll see on Saturday, a great long range shooter. Hey, David Noel showing a little bit of range there on the elbow jumper. I was teasing him about being a football player. Came here originally as a recruited football player. Dean Smith told me about him at the Jimmy D Foundation. He said he will be a major contributor. And when Dean talks, you listen. People listen. J.J. Reddick, by the way, 55% from three in ACC play. Double team on Williams. He tries to pass his way out of it, and he turns it over with a travel. Are you serious? Now look at this. Look at that where he's shooting the ball from. I mean... Murphy, North Carolina, man. That's unbelievable. <laughs> All the way on the other side of the state. He's uh, got incredible range. 
uses his legs. A lot of his shot comes because of his legs. Two for three from three-point range so far tonight. Carolina hanging around. Look at this. Three-point game. Rashad McCants for three. He's a big-time scorer. Averaging 21 a game in the ACC. 18.9 overall. You just knew they were going to come down. They are really making a better commitment defensively here tonight than I have seen. Game with a jump stop. Gets two players in the air. And now a foul is called on Carolina as Stewing is driven to the ground. You know, this Carolina program has lost 36 games in the last two years. And they lost 16 last year. I really feel one of the problems with this club is that they haven't had the great chemistry. What is chemistry? We try to define it sometimes, but chemistry is so valuable to a team that everybody understands their role. They know who the guys are that are shooters. Defensive players step up and do their job. Most of all, you play as a unit, as a team. You make commitment. They have not done that. And that's why they have struggled like they have sometimes against inferior competition. So if you're the coach of that team, if you're Roy, Roy Williams, how do you get them to buy into his message and to develop that commitment that they need? Well, you know, that happens when you win and win regularly. He will get it done because, trust me, he will get kids to feel and to be part of the system that he believes in, like he built up at Kansas. A couple of free throws for Daniel Ewing as Duke widens the lead to five. Look at some of the great names who have been a part of this fantastic rivalry in recent years. More great players and maybe another classic here tonight. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, and Steve Lavin here will be with you on the Budget Car Rental Halftime Report. Steve Carolina's gotten back into this game, but what's the number one thing they need to take care of? Well, in the middle of this run, they've cleaned up some sloppy passing and ball handling, both in the half court and in transition. That's going to be a key against Duke's pressure defense. I think North Carolina is in very good shape because they calmed down and they slowed down. They need to keep getting the ball inside Deshaun May. He's a real strength for them inside. He's getting every rebound. It seems we'll also have the latest on the Maurice Corrette situation coming up at halftime, guys. Hey, I'll tell you this, Jay, you're going to be happy to learn this, that your coach, Mr. Krzyzewski, said the best defensive team he's coached, 1986. He said with Dawkins and Amick on the perimeter, and he said yes, Mr. Billis on the inside. But Gantz a little bit short on the drive. He said this team is just about as good defensively as that 1986 team, and he gives Chris Duhon a lot of the credit. He says they're, he's their best defensive player, and he's easily the team MVP this season. Yeah, he's really the orchestra leader as well. Ewing on the drive. I really love Ewing. I'll tell you one thing. He is really an underrated player nationally. He can score points in a hurry, both from the perimeter and on the drive. Nine points for Ewing. How about Byron Sanders with the answer for the Tar Heels to make it a five-point game? I mean, that's good news when they get some points from their bench because they normally don't get them. A bad omen is Duke Gutzel is referee in the game. Yeah, but Duke, he's on the game. Yeah, that happened during the Duke-Maryland game as well. Double team and a good one forces Williams out high. They're having a tough time getting ready to open for some shots. Jackie Manuel swatted two of them away here tonight. He's got the size. He's matched up with the quickness. That's the one area he's going to have to work so much harder at getting free. He gets a lot of attention now. Five point lead for Duke. Two and a half to go. And now a foul on the inbounds play. Foul on Reddick. They held him. Byron Sanders has called for the foul. Here's another uh, deep into the past of this great rivalry, way back to 1973. Cents. Is that a bargain or what? Is 75 that a bargain? cents, wow. <laughs> Coach K, maybe I can borrow 75 cents from him. I think he's got a few dollars. <laughs> that, that game back at 33 was the first of many times uh, it is believed that this matchup was referred to as the matchup of the century, the battle of the century between Duke and North Carolina. There have been numerous of those since then. You know, we talked about certainly the numbers that Roy Williams has achieved. Mike Krzyzewski's numbers just blow you away. Nine final fours. He's inducted, and it's a beautiful building. The Naismith Hall of Fame in Springfield in 2001. And he's young enough to be able to enjoy being in the Hall of Fame, having his family and friends enjoy that moment. Eight-time National Coach of the Year. Nine regular season ACC titles. He's won the tournament eight times, five consecutive times. Are you serious? What is there to say negatively about Duke? You tell me. J.J. Redick with a couple of free throws. Now 71 for 73 on the season. How did he miss two? How did he miss two? You jinx I was watching the first one. He missed. You jinxed him. I know. Bill, I guess Ray told me that. I can't wait to see Brett, by the way, tomorrow night. I'll be down here tonight. 
Arizona Stanford game, one of the unbeaten teams in America, and they're a lot like Duke in that they have great balance as well and defend exceptionally well. And the Cardinal doing it despite some injuries. Justin Davis and now Manny Arias as well. Dan with a strong rebound. Nice look down low and two more for Sheldon Williams, who's the high scorer in this game with 14. Former teammate of D'Angelo Alexander from Oklahoma, who's now won four in a row after losing four in a row. But Carolina makes a little run, two or three baskets, and then Duke comes right back. Fortunate bounce there for the Tar Heels into the hands of Jawad Williams. So one real ingredient why Duke always has a chance to win is because they defend so well as Williams hits that shot. Now playing without a mask. Right, had a broken nose. He's also had a concussion, stitches. First points of the night for Williams, who averages almost 14 per game. Execution by Duke, so effective, yeah, right down the lane. You gotta be able to get help. See, that's when we talk about team defense. You know, you beat one guy, but somebody's gotta step in. Now that would be right there. Nobody stepped in on that one either. I was expecting that anything you can do, I can do better. Right there, I was waiting for. It. You know, really one of the great point guards in America. When you think about point guards, hey, what about Devin Harris? What a job he's doing at Wisconsin at 38 last night. Best player in the Big Ten, MVP in the Big Ten. Turnover committed by Duke. So Carolina will get it back. Duke, after losing to Purdue up in Alaska in November, they have won 15 in a row since then. But St. Joseph's from Stanford still haven't lost all season. You know, not only have they won 15 in a row, you know what the margin of victory has been? 21.3. Oh. And in that streak, teams have only scored 58.5 against them. And as you would say, it's not Cupcake City. Oh. I mean. <laughs> Not so, in this league. Oh, it's some tough out-of-conference games before they got into league play. Noel off with a jumper, tries to save it, but can't. You know, Duke gets a great advantage now going into the second part of the season. They get five home games out of the eight where Carolina yeah. is reversed because Duke has taken care of what they've had to do on a road. How about this? Duke has four wins on the road in ACC play. The rest of the league combined has six. They're 4-0 on the road. And you know how poorly they looked early in the year, struggling with Detroit, getting beat by Purdue. I really thought it was going to be a good team, but not a great team. But they made that commitment to defense, and that just takes you to another level when you get five guys playing as a unit defensively. Right on the clock down, they turn it over. A little bit of time for Melvin Scott. That's a foul. foul. That's a bad foul. you got to be smarter than that. you got to be smarter than that. Coach K. But it's a lot of his success to West Point. He said his foundation and his beliefs really happened at West Point when he played for Bob Knight. He was a point guard. See right now, take a look right here, coming off. I see it right here. This is so look where you are. You gotta know the clock, you gotta know the situation, you know the time of the game. You gotta know the situation. I mean, he's too good a player, Mr. Duhon. And sends Melvin Scott to the line with a chance to cut into the lead right at the end of the half as he knocks down the first. You just give him two. I mean, this is a leader. This is a guy that's supposed to understand. He got caught up a little bit in emotion. But Mike Shashevsky, great article by Luciana Ch Chavez, did an unbelievable article about West Point and the foundation that was established in his beliefs. Maybe a big turnaround at the end of the half. The turnover, the foul, the free throws, and Carolina back within five. Chris Duhon and Raymond Felt, these two extremely talented point guards are star watch dishing more than scoring. Are we on our way to another classic matchup here? Race and company, stick around and find out. Now back to the gang in the studio. All right, Dan, glad to have you with us on the budget halftime report. And Duhon's brain lock late in the first half there gets Carolina back to within five. Jay Billis, Steve Lavin with me. We'll hear from them in just a little bit. Maurice Claret is indeed eligible to be a member of the 2004 car rental halftime report. We'll talk about this competitive ACC and some of the teams that might wonder whether they are pretenders, contenders, and who might be in better shape than you think. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of Rivalry Week is presented by Cisco Systems. This is the power of the network now. And in part by The Pilot, built by Honda. It gets you surprisingly close to nature. Meanwhile, welcome to the Budget Rent a Car Halftime Report. North Carolina caught a break right at the end of the first half. They're right back in the fight. 
premier rivalry, men's college basketball, Duke up by five. Glad to have you with us. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems here on the Budget Halftime Report. You know, guys, in the ACC, Duke is certainly leading the way already with all of those road wins for them that Dan Schulman mentioned in the first half. You see how competitive and balanced the league is. Only two clubs above 500 overall. Duke's one of them, and the other one is North Carolina State. NC State rallied from 16-point deficit last night against Wake Forest. Julius Hodge has just been outstanding for them, along with Scooter Sherrill, too. Scooter Sherrill, an outstanding shooter. He was a McDonald's All-American, and now as a senior, really starting to play well. This team plays some five-out motion, kind of a Princeton-style system, and it's really hard to guard. And along with North Carolina State, another surprise in the league, particularly Particularly the way they played at home. Leonard Hamilton and Florida State, 4 and 1 at home in the league, Steve. Well, they're a deep team, a very young team, but Tim Pickett, a senior, a go to player that can knock it down from long distance, put it on the floor, and create problems both off of penetration for himself and his teammates. They've knocked off some ranked teams. That's going to help them in the eyes of the selection committee. And you know what? When you start, I mean, a lot of teams are, are lose games on the road, but these two teams have dominated at home. They've won some on the road, and they have very good record against the top 20, or pretty good records against the top 25, and solid against the top 50. Well, those four and five wins, respectively, against the top 50 are really going to help them going down the stretch. And it's important that you don't look just at the ACC standings because that's a monster league this year. And there's been talk that you can get seven teams out of the ACC into the NCAA tournament. So you, win, you talk about teams like Maryland, uh, who's three and five right now. Maryland is still in very good shape to make the NCAA tournament field as an at-large team, even if they don't win the ACC tournament or win the league. This team has quality wins over uh, Florida. They won against Wisconsin. They won against North Carolina in the league. You have to look at who they're going against and in the other at-large teams from other leagues. And I think they stack up very favorably. I think the Terps will be in the NCAA tournament. Of course, they have to keep winning. People ask, what do they have to do? Of course, keep winning. <laughs> but they've done an awful lot even up to this point. Well, the Terps are one of those young teams similar to Syracuse last year. Uh, Syracuse wasn't even ranked in the top 25 in January, and they made that run. They're young, talented, well coached by Gary Williams. North Carolina State, you got to love the Princeton-style system. Very difficult to defend in an NCAA tournament uh, situation, a single elimination game format, it's tough to prepare for. Marcus Melvin, big, wide, husky body that can step out and knock down shots, made a big shot last night down the stretch for North Carolina State. Herb Sindek, different times, taking a lot of criticism, been on the hot seat, going for his third straight NCAA tournament. He's a heck of a coach, very smart, getting the most out of his team. You know, one of the things that we talk about a lot of times, teams taking advantage of opportunities. Maryland, you guys mentioned, they were able to do that last night on the road against Virginia. Jay, you mentioned they were three and five. They were in danger of falling to two and six in conference play. And Virginia, which had a chance, they also did fall to two and six. The late turnover there. Strawberry missed the shot. Gilchrist fouled it in. And Gary Williams' team came up with a four-point win on the road. Now, the flip side of taking advantage of that is missing an opportunity. And it's something that sort of happened right now to Pete Gillen in Virginia and in fact it's been a bit of a, a, a albatross for Gillen come this time of year the last few years. Well, I'll tell you one thing they've really struggled with is getting stops. Teams that struggle, we talked about it earlier with North Carolina, teams that can't get stops can't ever get into transition and in late games you've got to be able to get stops. You look at Virginia, they've got a lot of quick athletes, some interchangeable parts, but they seem to lack an identity in terms of what they want to get done offensively and then defensively just porous in terms of giving up easy baskets. But you're right, they had an opportunity at home against Maryland last night and couldn't close and that's been a problem for Pete Gillen's team. Traditionally, they haven't been able to guard and it's a team that likes to get out and press, but you've got to have great quickness and great togetherness if you're going to press. When you press full court, oftentimes you can give up a lot of easy baskets, and that's been the problem for Virginia over the last couple of years. They've got to have the mentality to get stops. All five guys, you can play 80% great defense, you still give up a basket. And Native starting to get a little restless in Charlottesville, too, as Virginia misses yet another opportunity. And we continue on the budget halftime report. It is Throwdown Thursday, and we will deliver some serious throwdowns when we come back. This halftime report is presented by Budget Rent a Car. Back on the budget halftime report. Throwdown Thursday means it's time to throw it down. Vigadala on the run. They're not going to get him. Ride, 
the fella. Rise for it. That's a top 10 play on ESPN. Absolutely. So about the only thing Diana Taurasi can't do is it done offensively, but after they made her mad at one point, she hit a three there, finished with 18, 81-67. UConn does it to Tennessee again. And we still have more coming your way. Blake Step and the Bulldogs get set to take on West Falls Waves, 11 o'clock Eastern time. We're going to paint it navy there in the kennel tonight, trying to have all the fans wear blue. And look at the way Mark Few, few have done it better than Mark has in his first five seasons. The number of wins he's put up, it's a pretty good company coach. Yeah, what's really impressive, he's also an outstanding fly fisherman. I think that's one <laughs> edge he has on the rest of the names up there. And to do it at a WCC school in the Northwest, really impressive. Nobody caught fish better than Everett Case. Give me a break. <laughs> I, I thought maybe Foddy Anderson, perhaps, was as good a fisherman as there was. Hey, Chris Duhine had a little bit of a problem at the end of the first half. Only two points, but he has handed it out for the Devils. Duke up by five, second half's coming. This halftime report is presented by Budget Rent a Car. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball, presented by the Mass Mutual Financial Group. You can predict, you can prepare. Cisco Systems, this is the power of the network, now. And in part by GMC, we are professional grade. Back inside what is affectionately known as the Dean Dome here in Chapel Hill. It's rivalry week presented by Cisco Systems. Duke has led the entire game. But Carolina made a run to get back within five at the end of the half. Our game track, Dick, just too easy for Duke to get the ball inside on Carolina. They were really doing a great job getting it inside, especially to Sheldon Williams, who had 14 on the interior. They also were driving into the gap getting to the basket. But Mr. Fellow was able to get it to the paint as well. Both clubs really were trying to establish inside play. May for North Carolina, Williams for Duke. And did a great job in that area. I think the one guy, when I look at J.J. Redick, and he's took five shots in the first half, he averages about 10.8 shots a game. A guy with that shooting ability has got to get at least 15 shots a game somehow. I know Duke's very balanced, but didn't Jim Calhoun tell us that he'd love to see Mr. Gordon get about 18 20 shots a game? I'm sure Mike Krzyzewski feels the same way about J.J. Redick. Nice drive to the bucket to get Carolina back within three. North Carolina has not led at any point in this game. At one point, they were down by 12 midway through the first half. Sheldon Williams for the big first half, 14 points, five rebounds. Nice look for Dane, who also stuffed the stat sheet in the first half. Nowhere to go, though. Good D by Jawad Williams. They're doing a great job defensing Mr. Reddick. They can run up on his face. They're going to make him have to put the ball into the deck. A block and a tie-up, and the arrow will keep it with Duke. But only one second left on the shot clock as we check out the GMC first half stats. Not one, but both teams shot 50%. But the biggest problem, Dick, they couldn't get their shots up because they turned it over so much. Yeah, a lot of turnovers in the first half. Duke forces about 17.3 turnovers per game, almost 18 a game. Number one on the shot clock now for the Blue Devils. And they won't get the shot up. Is that coaching Wayne Trust, Johnny Dawkins, is he ready? He's definitely ready to be a head coach somewhere in America, but he absolutely loves it down at Duke. I'll tell you one thing, eventually he stays there. I think he's the guy that ultimately will take over that Duke program. Wow. And that's a lot of years. Mike Schultz is going nowhere. Rashad McCann's trying to establish position down in the post is called for the foul. His second, I know you feel that, not the foul, but going down in the, on the block, that's something McCann should do more of. Yeah, I really believe that. I think he's a great low post player. He's a guy that can really take the inside in front really well. Here's Reddick at a couple of threes in the first half. It only took five shots. Now Duhon to Sheldon Williams. Boy, the strength and the agility for the big man who's got 16. Well, he's headed for a 20-point night tonight. He's really so effective down in that interior. 
Kevin Felton right now being defended by Daniel Ewing. Blows right by him. Wide open. Jawan Williams. The three is short, but he gets it back. And that was created by the penetration ability of Felton, one of the great penetrators in America. Well, let's talk about one of the major themes of the first half, Dick. Missed opportunities by North Carolina. Yeah, you got to score right here. Here's Mr. May. Comes up empty, but keeps the ball alive. Big white body. you got to make that count. Come on, Sean. Getting opportunities on the interior. Shot 50% in the first half against that Duke defense. Carolina continues to get the ball inside. And another foul committed by the Blue Devils. That will be on Williams, his second. Here's the ball to the inside. I tell you, Duke challenges on every shot. They really come after you. His daddy's in the house tonight. Dad was player of the year for Indiana. Played for the Hoosiers when they were unbeaten on Blemish back in 1976. Uh, either Stanford or St. Joseph's going to run the table right, not just the regular season. Is it, do either of them have a shot to go all the way in a match in Indiana? Well, until anybody beats them, but I would say right now, very difficult for that to occur. If I lay it out my number one series, if you watch him on the inside, Mr. Bay with a score there. I'd go St. Joe's, Duke, Stanford, and Pittsburgh right now, but that could certainly change. And what about Mississippi State? Yeah. They got to do the hunt with Pittsburgh as well. When you think about the fact that lost once, alternate possession, kept them from being undefeated. Duke right now, the number one ranked team in the country, 18 and one on the season, a 15 game winning streak, and now a five point lead as Daniel Ewing hits the three and as he touches the crowd. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have to do that. Just shoot and score. How about May now asserting himself inside? He's got a double double. He must have heard us talk about missed opportunities because he's right now very effective. He's got that big, wide body, great hands. 13 points, 13 rebounds for May. Sheldon Williams now scores right over the top of May. He looks up Mr. May. He says, Mr. May, you get the tip in. I'm going to shoot the little J, baby, right in your face. 18 for Sheldon Williams, who averages just under 12. So he's already way over that. Felton, no. Loose ball to McCants. Then Felton drain Not close. Rebound McCants. And out of bounds, off the cans, back to do. There's their leader, Roy Williams, on that sideline, trying to encourage. Now here comes Mr. May, inside position. Nobody blocks him out. You got to get a body on that big guy. Look at a nice touch. You notice with the fingertips, you don't tip with your palm of your hand. You tip with your fingertips. Great touch. They work on drills on that. May has made his last four shots. He's got great hands for a big guy, and he's having a big night. As is the guy with the ball right now, Williams. Triple team, and Felton takes it away. He's got to find the open man when they double up on him like that. And three guys surround him. Jackie Manuel isn't giving any help, and that is so smart. Staying with J.J. Redick. Roy Williams told us today, we cannot help off J.J. Redick. If we give any kind of help, they're going to rotate the ball, and it's going to be right open for a jumper. Sean May having to play a ton of minutes and play at a very high level. He's lost some weight from last year. Remember, he broke the bone in his foot. He's lost about 13 pounds. Maybe a little bit more to go? Well, we said yes, but the bottom line is we oh. said, had he not got an injury last year, that would be no Williams here, that would be no Bill Self in Kansas, and then right now be no coaching change at Illinois. So, so Sean May's broken he foot, really. A whole chain reaction. Yeah, he really did create an incredible because they would have won enough games that Matt Doherty would have been able to keep his job. I hope that somebody gives Matt Doherty an opportunity. He's got passion, he's got work ethic, and he can recruit. If you don't believe he can recruit, take a look at these <laughs> players that are right here, right now, wearing his uniform. The wall dang was called for the foul for Duke, his second. The ball back over to Carolina. They got within two briefly. Early here in the second half, they have never led in this game. Here's McCants just freeing himself from Ewing. And we've got a foul called on the Blue Devils tomorrow night. The NBA season continues with a doubleheader on ESPN. It begins with a Kia NBA shoot-around at 7.30. The Magic against the Nets is the first game. And then it is Tim Duncan and the Spurs taking on the Sacramento Kings at 10.30 Eastern time. That game also available 
in ESPN HD. To say now, Maurice Claret is eligible for the NFL draft. I'll tell you this, underclassmen in the NFL just not going to make it. Physically not ready. Bob, at the NBA level, you've been able to make that transition. You see kids like LeBron James, even though I only hope that the David Stern rule would come into effect 20 years of age and let kids be kids. Just as the Grant Hills, the Tim Duncan, the, all those kind of kids, David Robinson, about their greatest years. May working hard again, missed the shot. And the ball goes over to Duke. You know, another thing it would do is if, if you remove the possibility of a, a freshman or a sophomore going to the NBA, they might play a little bit differently in college basketball. Instead of worrying about the scouts and their stats, exactly. they play some team Come basketball. On, trying to impress everybody. Bottom line is it works beautifully in baseball. Once you enter college, you can't out to move the draft for you to be three years. Jackie Manuel, a little bit out of control, off the fingertips of May Ewing. He's got help. And he is, oh, a double dribble is the call. Excellent call. It was definitely a double dribble. No doubt about it. Mike Krzyzewski not happy, but that was a good call. Coach, that was a good call. Look at Mr. Bay on the inside. Big guys working hard. Carolina trying to climb back in. It would have been due. Cisco Systems from the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale. But you don't forget, North Carolina will play at Duke and Cameron on the final Saturday of the regular season over on ESPN. Yeah, we'll have that game at 9 o'clock. I can't wait. Our studio's coming down there as well. Hey, I love the quote by Mike Krzyzewski. Yes, Dean Smith was doing a book signing. And there were hundreds of people lined up. He's got a great new book. He did it with John Kilgo, who's from this area, about leadership, Carolina's way. I mean, 36 years, what an amazing job he did. Bottom line is, he said, Duke probably will not lose another game. They're so talented. Mike Krzyzewski had a great line when they asked him about it. He said, Dean still must be coaching. He's trying to play psychology game. But Kance misses the three. May keeps it alive. And now we've got a foul going against the Blue Devils. Don't forget that later on tonight, there's more college basketball action for you on Throwdown Thursday, presented by Mass Mutual. The Waves of Pepperdine taking on Step, Turioff, Violet, Morrison, and the rest of the Zags. One of Dick's picks to make it all the way to the Final Four. It's all a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN and ESPN2. Hey, Dan, I'm going to right now take it. You'll handle the whole game. I just got worried. Now, Michael Jordan is in the house, and so is Dean Smith. They're hiding somewhere. We can't find him. And nobody blocked out. Yes, McCann's right to the basket. Gets himself a layout off the glass. This place loves that. And we got a two-point game, baby. The heels are ready. Will they beat Duke for the sixth time? With Duke being number one in the Mike Krzyzewski era. And another fact of that last foul is on Sheldon Williams, his third, and he's gone to the bench. Ewing is having a big night. Knocked away by May. Here come the heels, led by their quarterback, Felton. Cylinder. Yes, sir. Interference right up there. Sheldon Williams has taken a lot of minutes away from him all year because of foul trouble. Take a look right here. There's Felton now with the little jump shot. Look at look at right here. Playing with the ball. You cannot play with the ball up on that cylinder. You can do that internationally, but you can't do it on a collegiate level. Jackie Manuel chasing JJ Reddick all over the floor. Lost him for a moment. Reddick misses the shot. Again, Felton. Nice. Manuel. Tie game. They can really run the transition game. When they run, baby, they can run. They can fill the floor up. They will miss Sheldon Williams on the inside. The Tar Heels with their transition game. Hey, turn it blue is their cry here tonight. Turn it blue. College best. Are you loving your first game, Carolina Duke? Be I did about 40 of them. down as many as 12 never having led in this game all the way back into a tie at 49 with Duke with plenty of time to go the Blue Devils a little bit of foul trouble Raymond Felt leading the break a couple of times getting easy layup for his teammates and the roof's about ready to blow right off the Dean Dome here tonight if Carolina can move on top well when they get that transition game take a look at his 15 game win streak total minutes that they trail that's an amazing number Average win margin 21 points per game during the win streak Duhon 
on the floor with three fouls. Sheldon Williams on the bench with three fouls. Randolph's going to have to step up now, give him some inside attack when Williams out of the game. Dang posting up on Noel. Nice one. <laughs> yeah, we are not going to like. Duhon, turn it over. Trying to make that one extra pass. Had himself an open shot in that area. May gives it up. McCann's passes it up. Now the lead for Carolina for the first time tonight. I'll tell you one thing. McCann's starting to attack the basket a little bit. Previously, we had a situation where Reddick didn't block him out and allowed him to get right to the goal. The first lead for Carolina, courtesy of the leading scorer in the ACC this year, is Sean McCants. And remember, they've already beaten the number one on this floor this year, the Huskies of Connecticut. Randolph follows the missed jumper, another rebound for Sean May, his 15th. McCants, and Carolina almost turns oh, it over. Right there. There. And Noel may be hurt. Randolph the foul as Noel hits the floor now, hard. Now watch this. There's no block out after he's going to shoot the ball. We're going to watch the situation right there. Now watch the jump shot. Now look at Reddick. Freeze it. Reddick goes. He's going to come directly to the basket. Right here. Holler right there. See, he's trailing the play. He's trailing the play. His guy's got the inside for a layup. Reddick is nowhere near him to block him out. That is a no-no, man. That's a no-no. Fundamentally, that's a breakdown. Yep. David Noel shaken up. He goes out for Carolina. Meanwhile, Dick, Sheldon Williams back in. Mike Krzyzewski says it's time to stop the momentum for Carolina right now. Well, he's their inside threat. They need him on the floor. Baseline, Jawan Williams. Rebound, Jackie Manuel. Well, Jackie Manuel does so many little things so well for this North Carolina team. Well, he really played well defensively in those sports tonight. He is really not allowed Reddick to get a lot of good looks. May working over Williams. And the rebound to Duke. Out of the crowd comes Duhon. Also in transition, North Carolina doing a better job tonight defensively. You don't see many fast break opportunities for Duke. Roy Williams told his team, as he told us before the game, this is just like any other game. But remember, if you compete, if you defend, you can win. But if not, you've got no chance. Ewing for three, and Duke's back on top. It's my guy, Mr. Ewing. Do you believe it's just another game? Give me a break. <laughs> Give me a break. Are you serious? There's no way you can tell these kids it's just another game. 15 for Daniel Ewing, who's made a big shot after big shot. And Roy Williams is some kind of upset. You know what, really what he was meaning by a statement like that, the same with Mike Krzyzewski, what they mean by that is you have to come to play against everyone. You can't just pour it all out here and then forget the next game because think about what they got. They got a day coming up in about 48 hours in the Forest at Wake. Afternoon game. And an angry Wake team. And then at Georgia Tech. On Tuesday. Week, right? And then the weekend they got Maryland over here at ABC. That foul, Jawad Williams is second. Look at Sheldon Williams get up in the air. No basket. You know, we watch Felton and we watch certainly Mr. Duhon. I think at a great point guards in America, the best to me has been Jameer Nelson. He would get my vote as national player of the year. Okafor coming on strong. But you got to think also of Devin Harris and Aaron Miles, who I love, is so underrated. The foul on Raymond Felton, by the way. Here's the stretch Dick was talking about for Carolina. Saturday afternoon, about a 36-hour turnaround until they played awake. And then Tuesday night at Georgia Tech. And then home Sunday to Maryland. Another three. This one by Duhon. That's the Duhon stepping up, leadership, experience. Jawan Williams, no, follow, yes. Really attack him at last. Jack Emanuel. He's really aggressive tonight, very active. Eight points now for Manuel off the bench. Carolina back with an deuce and an eternity still to go in this game. Will this be one of the classics down the stretch? Stay tuned, baby. Number one here in for a battle. Sheldon Williams. Tries to follow the miss. Manuel is fouled hold. by Ewing. They get Noel fouled by Ewing. They get a hold down there. Randy right, Ewing played in high school with T.J. Ford. Also, Taylor played with him as Eddie well. T.J. Taylor, that's right. Yes, sir. Hey, Texas is quietly putting together some nice numbers. Struggled a little bit early in the year. Duke put the hurt on him. Arizona put the hurt on him. Dick already the seventh team foul committed by Duke this half. Ewing's got three. Williams has three. Duhon has three. 
And David Noel goes to the line for North Carolina. Missed the first six games of the season with a thumb injury. They had virtually no depth. He's been a major contributor for them off the bench since coming back. Well, today's the first day he's got the rubber cast off his right hand. He told me that on his right thumb, it's off. I talked to him before the game. May have been a workhorse on the inside. Noel's a real good contributor off the bench. And he has tied the game by knocking down a couple of free throws. It's turning into a classic here in Chapel Hill. North Carolina once again back into a tie with Duke at 55. One of the big reasons they've done that in the second half. Jackie Manuel off the bench, Dick, for North Carolina has done it at both ends. But well, he's really done a great job on a defensive end. He says, no, Mr. Reddick, you're not getting that jumper off. And there he is the second time. Then offensively, hangs around the basket. That's what he does best, score on the inside, as Mike Patrick would say. Hey, you know, North Carolina has lost three in a row to Duke as Duke number one. As the last three times they've played him on a number one is with the Reddick's numbers right now. Only six attempts so far. 28-23-17. Whether they win this or not, it's not going to be no 25-pointer tonight. You can see from the look on Mike Krzyzewski's face, he knows and he knew coming into the game he would have a real battle on his hands here tonight. Reddick's taken only one shot in the second half. Keep your eyes on him and how hard Manuel's working, running all around the court with him. Yeah, he's really in denial. He's beating up the spots, and he's got that great size. See, he gave help. Should they give help that time, Jackie? Reddick with a rare miss from beyond the are given his numbers recently but a fresh 35 for Duke. Your first instinct is to give help to the basketball and that's what he did in that sequence and Reddick's got that great ball fade. Right now Reddick's got McCants on him and he gets free but he misses again. Starting to hurry the shot a little bit. He is scoreless in the second half. Carolina can take its first lead of the night. No, it's second lead of the night. Had one briefly a couple of minutes ago. He doesn't normally miss that badly as he did. Psychologically, he's trying to shoot it quickly. He knows they're rotating over. Nice post play inside. Mismatch. It was Williams on Reddit. Williams took advantage of the size difference. Went on the interior. He started off the year playing so well. Then had the concussion, the broken nose. Here's Reddick. Tries to get Emmanuel in the air and draws the foul. He's got him right down here. See this right now? He's going to take advantage. He's going to throw right over the top to him. Right over the top. There it is. He pins him on the inside. He seals him. And Reddick's got no shot. Total mismatch, my friend. 6-8 against 6-3. Duke going to the line for the first time here in the second half, and it's Reddick after Jackie Manuel's third foul. That's like comparing the body of Arnold Schwarzenegger with Danny DeVito's man. <laughs> a total mismatch. I got a body by DeVito. <laughs> my producer. A little, a little stretched out. My producer's got a body by Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Manuel goes out after the third foul, probably not for too long, given the way that he's playing. Now, who covers Reddick if you're Roy Williams? Well, that's a decision they got to make on F4, but I'm not making that decision. I'm not getting paid <laughs> Williams to do that. I know what they were wasting time with him shooting free throws. Yeah. Why waste any time? Just caught it. It's automatic. I mean, nothing but nylon. The kid is automatic. He's missed two all year. Earlier this season, set an ACC record with 54 consecutive made free throws. They want to get the ball inside. They want to get it to me. Tied up yet again, this time at 57. Melvin Scott, not there. Rebound Duke. I would bring the ball inside to May. Get him some touches down the low box. And to Sheldon Williams playing with three fouls, so he's got to be a little bit careful. That's to exactly it. why I would bring it to him. Dang, that should be a hell ball, but I guess the officials say it came loose while he was up in the air. Tough fadeaway. I tell you, that freshman can make big plays. He plays within the system. A lot of other places, you know, put on a lot of points, but they don't win. You see Humphreys up in Minnesota, who would have been a dookie. Yeah. But when they're, hey, they're all eight conference play Minnesota. Hard to believe. The Big Ten is not vintage Big Ten. Dang now with nine. Duke back on top by two. The Blue Devils hit May, get six May. out of seven in this series. Get Mason touches. Felton is fouled on his way to the basket. Don't forget, tomorrow night, it's NBA Friday on ESPN. A matchup of the Nets in Game 1. Spurs and the Kings with a matchup. That should be on ESPN HD at 10.30 Eastern Time. Tomorrow on ESPN. Meanwhile, major, major fourth development. Foul. Fourth foul on the leader, Chris Duhon.
Goes to that sideline where they got three former Duke guards. Johnny Dawkins, Mr. Wojciechowski, outstanding defensive player. Chris Collins, outstanding shooter. Last year down here, he had a little bit of a battle down yes, here, Mr. Did. Collins. Yeah, Matt Doherty, the man, the coach of North Carolina, and Chris Collins had some words, and, and almost a little bit more than that during the game here. And then at the ACC tournament, right? Guys would shake hands with each other. I mean, this is a real rivalry. There's not a lot of love lost. Oh, here. you got to shake hands. you got to give each other a lot of love, man. Williams working hard. McCants might have gotten him from behind. And a save by Carolina. They got, got numbers. numbers. They got numbers, baby. Yes, sir. Great play. Go without the ball. The oldest play in the game. Give it up and get it back. Give it up and get it back. Rashad McCants with the finish and a chance to get Carolina the lead of the line as all Duhon can do is look on in frustration. Notice how he gives it up and he gets it right back, uses the left hand on the left hand side of the court. Fundamentally, they work on that kind of game. The two man of drills for three on two, two on one. 16 points now, Dick, for McCants, who's averaging about 24 a game his last five games, and Carolina's got the lead again. And now they're going to a half-court trap with Duhon out of the game. They need Duhon's leadership on that floor. They'd like to get him in at the five-minute mark. Yeah, big minutes here now for Dockery in place of Duhon. Good look for Ewing. What a night he's having. Hey, now you understand why I love him? <laughs> now you understand why I say he's been underrated? He'll make big shots. You can't allow him to be open. Can you imagine that back in high school? But when did it lose? Out of two years in a row, right? T.J. Ford and Ewing together? Wow. Ewing with four threes and 18 points in the game. Quiets the crowd momentarily. Good entry. Bring it into it. May settles for the jumper. Rebound Dang. Should have attacked. They got to understand the situation. Williams has got three fouls. Yep. He's not going to want to pick up number four. Roy knows that. Mr. May has got to be able to understand that. I think a lot of times the players have no clue what situations are on the floor. They just play. Dang took a shot. Play continues. Melvin Scott with a crossover. And the Kents will lay it in. Nice play by Scott to create that opportunity. And Dang is still down right in front of his own bench. He collided with David Noel that led to that break, and Dang is still lying flat on his back. Remember this, Duke, you talk about no bench with North Carolina. Duke plays seven players, basically. We'll try to check out Dang's situation when we come back. Meanwhile, well, a good sign for Luol Deng. He's back up on his feet, but will now take a seat on the bench. He's going to come out. He took a shoulder right to the jaw. jaw from David Noel. Yeah, right under the jaw. Put him right down. Dang Look at this right here. Can you believe this? He's wide open. He's playing. Get me the ball. Get me the ball. J.J. Reddick, the best shooter in America. Look at him. He's dancing. He's doing a John Travolta. He says, get me the rock. Give me the rock. Finally, they get him to him a little too slow, but he kicks it out. Nice play by J.J. to get it over to Ewing for the open jump. So Duke right now with Duhon on the bench with four fouls and Dang on the bench with the injury. So Shavlik, Randolph, Sean Dockery, big minutes for them now down the stretch. Well, you know, Duke with that dribble penetration likes to kick the ball back out to the three-point shooters. They lay off Dockery. He misses the three. There's Randolph, who Mike Krzyzewski told us is playing the best he's played ever at Duke, but he misses an easy one there. Yeah, he didn't go up strong at all. Went up very weak on that one. How about going up strong? There. What a drive. What a penetrator. Had the big game against Georgia Tech. Raymond Felton gives North Carolina the lead. They are up by two. Everybody loves Raymond down in Carolina. I don't blame him. I love him. What talent. Ewing the floater. A little bit strong. Rebound Duke. Oh, Reddick got an open look. And he misses again. Too quick. He's really taking the shot very quickly. Not settling down and squaring his body and getting a normal J.J. Reddick jumper because he's aware that they're really coming at him quickly. A very quiet second half for Reddick. Felton on the drive. Tip no good. And the chance with good points. Felton now for three. They need Duhon. They can't wait. They need leadership. The heels are up five. Will they be the number number one? North Carolina's been ten number one. That's right. Tied with UCLA. Won this year over Connecticut. Turn it blue is the cry here tonight. And baby, it is blue. <laughs> and five of the.
those 10 wins over a number one team have come at the expense of Duke as Raymond felt not a great outside shooter. It's a monster three to get Carolina its biggest lead of the night. He is a big time point guard. Mike Krzyzewski's exact words thus tonight in the locker room. Raymond Felton is a great player. It's a big shot, Carolina by five. They were down as many as 12 in the first half, and Mike Krzyzewski can wait no longer. Sheldon Williams with foul, three fouls is in the game. Chris Duhon with four fouls is in the game. And Luol Dang, who was injured before, is back into the game and now for Duke as well. So Mike Krzyzewski says the time is now. Well, it is really now. Momentum certainly on the side of this North Carolina team. They need a big bucket here. Reddick just not finding the mark here tonight. Nice pass. Look at that transition there. Nobody runs it better when they are really getting it out. Oh, yes, they feel it, baby. What a transition basketball team. They are like Connecticut and Arizona all see Saturday. You can't allow them to get in the open court. They're so explosive. Rashad McCann's from Raymond Felton. A 9-0 run for the Tar Heels. Dang in trouble. They got Duhon back in the game right now. Felton defending him. Can Reddick get hot? Ewing's been carrying them here in the second half. Carolina really doing a better job defensively, really attacking the perimeter shooters. Belt loses it. Give it up. Give it up. Should have given it up a little sooner. Yeah, Reddick couldn't get the shot off by the time he got it. Carolina beat Duke here last year, but they've lost 12 of the last 14 in this series. Ewing a deep three. Tip is good for Sheldon Williams. Well, Sheldon said if nobody's going to throw it into the post, I'll just go tip it. They have forgotten about that and yeah. going exclusively for the three. they got to get the ball inside to Mr. Williams, who's so effective on the interior. Now Roy Williams seeing some things he doesn't like. Calls a timeout. You know, you want to avoid losing streaks in this league. If they lose this game, coming off the loss to Clemson, and now going to play Wake Forest on Saturday, that can lead to trouble. ESPN.com poll as you look at the continuation of this rivalry 69% of voters said that this is the best rivalry in college basketball it's hard to disagree that guy would vote for it I know uh, that I'd like to get him in a uniform with his versatility when he played in a national championship team His possibility, he is unquestionably the Blue Devils MVP this season. See, I would get a speed of roll Williams inside and get him some touches on the interior because they're really coming after the perimeter people. Dang, way off with that jumper, and Sean May has his 17th rebound of the night. Shot selection so important, taking the right shot. Belton commits a turnover. Right now, Duke breaking down in terms of shot selection. That's a good one. And a foul is called on May as he crushes Dang to the floor. It'll be just May 2nd. Good find by Reddick. Yeah, an excellent look by J.J. Reddick as they rotated out to him. Finding Dang, who took it to the goal, and now you must convert on that free throw line. Former point guard, when he played at West Point, he used to kick it out to his shooter. I'll give you a name a lot of people don't remember, by the name of Jim Oxley. Back at West Point, what a shooter he was. At the line, Luol Dang, 64% free throw shooter on the season. Right now, when you think about outstanding diaper Dan's, you can name the five best in America. You got to include the name Dan. Take a look at the leading scorers. The Cants, we're not certainly shocked at all. The leading scorer in the ACC and has been on fire lately. In conference play. Mr. Williams effective. I don't think they're getting it inside enough to him, Dan. Big finish on the way from Chapel Hill. Don't miss it. <laughs>
Throwdown Thursday will continue in the kennel. Roni Turioff in the Zags getting set to take on Pepperdine. That is coming up next. And could Carolina knock off Duke? Could Stanford be the new number one team in the land? Certainly doing their part at Maples up 43-22 on Arizona State. And Arizona's coming in Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern on ABC, guys. Well, Reese, Dick Vitale will be out there along with Brett Musburger as part of Saturday's coverage on ABC. What about the Cardinal, number two? As you can see, a uh, regional action. Some will get Georgia Tech, Tennessee, others, Marquette, to ball. You are pumped to go out to California and see the Cardinal. Yeah, I really am, but what's about this statistic? It drives me bananas. I can't believe it. Do you know in the last eight meetings between Arizona and Stanford, the road team has won? That's incredible. The last eight meetings, the road team has won. Here the road team, Duke, which has led through most of the game and now trailing by three inside four minutes to play. Carolina trying to knock off the number one team in the country. And a travel is called on May. He lifted his pivot foot. He has a little dilemma with that. When he establishes himself, he takes the pivot foot up before he puts the ball to the deck. Now it's so important to understand shot selection, to get the ball in the hands of the right people. And the ball in the hand of the right guy for Duke, Chris Duhon, as he finds the shooter, Reddick. But Reddick has had a cold night. Dang posting inside, one-point game. What about Luau Dang in a big place he's made after being injured? Gets fouled on a drive to the goal, and now moves without the ball and gets a layup. 13 points, seven rebounds, five assists tonight for Luau Dang, despite the injury. Coming off a big game against Georgia Tech. First shot of McCants, good patience, finds Felton. He's in charge out there. They got Dang playing McCants right now. And we really challenge, got to communicate on the defensive end. Shot. They want to penetrate right now. Yep. They want penetration. Settles for the three, rims out on him. And it goes over to Duke, and now the Blue Devils, Dick, can take the lead. Well, they did a great job. They do de Their defensive system is ball pressure, help, and then block shots. Block out is the final phase when you look at Duke's elements in their defensive game. Duhon on the drive, and Raymond Felton thought he had him clean, but he is called for the foul, and Duhon will go to the line for two. The one negative with North Carolina defensively, there is too much dribble penetration that is allowed, not only here tonight, Tonight. And obviously their commitment here is a lot better in their effort than against some other clubs. In fact, Roy Williams told us if there's one thing he's disappointed about, here it is February, and they just haven't gotten it about making a commitment defensively. Duhon at the line, as you can see, not a great free throw shooter, but he ties the game with the first. It's great when you've got experience, my friend, when you've got a four-year player that's been part of a winner's mentality, and that's what he brings to Hunt. Because remember, he hasn't played in the scene where the team has taken a lot of beatings. He is understanding what winning is about. Amongst the starters for these two teams, the only senior as he rattles home the second, and Duke is back on top. Boy, we had lead change after lead change here in the second half after we didn't have any in the first half. You know, Duke has been part of 35 and 4, 31 and 4, 26 and 7. That's a lot of W's, Mr. Schulman. Throwdown Thursday, presented by Mass Mutual, continuing after us as you saw Pepperdine and Gonzaga from the kennel. Good look for Jawan Williams. Got an 8 0 run right now. Do and possession of the basketball. They're very similar to a team you saw the other night. Not in style of play, but understanding how to win. Winner's mentality. Kentucky against yeah. Florida. No Look. panic. Exactly. They're so poised. Williams got an open man. It's Ewing who's had a big night. The floater off the glass. No good. And Carolina takes over. Now they can take the lead. Back. Oh, baby. Number one. 15 in a row. The Dukies. And here they are with North Carolina trying to beat their second team to come here. Rated number one in America. No doubt Roy Williams will build this program back into the days that it was like with Mr. Dean Smith, the Michelangelo of coaching. Duke up by one, a minute and a half to go. It was all Duke in the first half, leading by as many as 12 as Carolina missed easy chance after easy chance, a lot of them for May, although May has played well tonight. In the second half, a little bit of a role reversal as Duke struggled from inside. 
And a few easy opportunities, but some of those they're really challenged. You know what's really impressive right here in the second half? In this half, North Carolina has not fouled. They played defense without fouling. In fact, Duke is not in a bonus yet. Six fouls committed by Carolina the with a minute one. and a half to go. So the next one will send Duke to the line. That's amazing. They played good, tough defense without fouling for almost almost 19 minutes. They've really played solid defense. Mark it on your calendars. Don't make plans. Saturday night, March 6th, Carolina wow. at Duke. 9 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale. Oh, I know where I'll be, baby. Mike's sitting right now on a beach in Hawaii. Here we go now. Defense is important here. Stop the penetration. Eight lead changes here in the second half of this game. McCants trying to make it nine, but a block inside by Sheldon Williams. And that's one of the great strong suits of Duke this year. Blocking shots. Jawad Williams, no. Rebound, dang, and a foul over the back on Jawad Williams. I'll tell you, blocking shots has been so incredible this year with Duke. They're going to break a record. The landlord on the inside. He's the landlord, baby. Mr. Williams is, uh-oh, Mr. McCants, get it out of here. I know you're a second-year player like I am. Get it out. Get the tenants out of here. I'm the landlord, baby. Once blocked 16 shots in a high school game when he was in junior high, but playing with the big guys, he came up with 16 blocks. And this guy's got to be considered among the most improved players in the country this year. Oh, I would agree with that. He's learning how to stay on the floor and not get himself into foul trouble. He's making free throws down here, down the stretch. Boy, and all of a sudden, this place is quiet. I mean, there are 20,000 people here wearing Carolina blue, and it is quiet in this building right now. Well, just remember this. Rashad McCann has been really clutch at the end of the game. He made two big threes in the last minute to beat Connecticut. Made a big basket to beat North Carolina State. Carolina trying to knock off number one. Williams, no. May working hard underneath. Yes! What a great effort right there by May. Using that big body, using those great strong hands. Comes from a great family about basketball with his dad. Take a look at this, a little flashback. UConn, number one in America. That's Jim Calhoun's club. Mr. Okafor, what a talent he is. He's my second choice behind Nelson for National Player of the Year. Jawad Williams still playing with a face mask at that point because of the broken nose in a big game. And then Rashad McCants, a three-pointer to is. tie it and a three-pointer late to win it. He wanted to rock. Celebration time. Look at that celebration. Do you think there'd be a celebration if they won tonight? <laughs> oh, look at this right here. McCants at 27 in that big W. He's saying, can I have one more three tonight? Just one more three tonight. Ten times North Carolina has defeated the number one team of the nation. Five of those times it has been Duke. Mike Krzyzewski in his incredible career at Duke is 27 and 28 against North Carolina going back over his 24 years. You know, that statistic is really deceiving in a way. The one opportunity you get a chance to play a lot of number ones when you play Duke. That's right. <laughs> Duke with the lead and the ball inside a minute to play. Reddick trying to get away from Jackie Manuel. He scores. What a job by Reddick. He was trying to create a foul opportunity and got himself a layup. He was really trying to create a situation to get fouled and attack in the basket. Really a smart basketball play. Really very, very bright. Look at that ball fake. And now he's going to attack the basket, hoping for the bump, hoping for the foul. Yet he converts on the drive. He's going to do more of that. Dick, the, what a time for Reddick to come up with his first field goal of the second half. He was really, I believe, hoping for the foul. Look at the bench. I mean, they sit there like a board of directors. I mean, that's like the board of directors. Shashevsky, CEO, chief executive officer. Look at him right now. They all jump and jump. That's the way. That's the way to go to yelling. Wow. Dude, I mean, I now up by three. 38 seconds to go. Each team with a timeout remaining. Carolina full Duke of 30. Both teams over the limit. The arrow to Carolina. Your Roy Williams, you've got the ball down three. Quick two, look for an open three. What's the strategy? Well, you know, it's plenty of time on the clock right now. You've got the easy two going into May. You take it. You only take the three if it's within your offensive concept. But if you get the easy two, then you have the got defense. to make sure that Reddick doesn't touch exactly. the ball. Exactly. you got to deny Reddick the basketball. You don't want him on a free throw lock. You don't want him on a free throw. Right now, you got to go to dribble penetration, my felon. Hope there's some help and get it out to McCants. And then get May on the offensive boards. 
I mean, a typical Duke, North Carolina clash. I've said it time and time again. The best rivalry in all of college sports. I know Michigan, Ohio State is special in football, but this is unique, my friends. What makes a rivalry? What makes a rivalry is competition. It makes for good players, good coaches. You don't have a rivalry if you don't have competition. Well, these are two of the elite programs that have been for, well, for forever and ever. By the way, that last time out was by Carolina. It's not one time out for each. It's two for Duke and none remaining for North Carolina. That could be a factor. Put a little pressure on the ball, make them take some time off the clock. There comes McCants. He's the guy that they know is good play. They good close defense. out on him in a hurry. They really closed out. Good defense. They were aware, obviously, doing a lot of scouting. They know each other's tendencies. Three-second difference between game clock and shot clock. Jawad Williams for the tie! Jawad Williams with that perimeter shot. He likes the fact he doesn't have that mask on. Now you do. You go for the win. You run it down to the last three seconds and hit the offensive boards if there's a missed shot. And Mike Sashansky is going to let him play. Watch Williams on the inside with the offensive rebound. You know, made the rebound. Felt Williams. Overtime. We're going nowhere, baby. We can stay here all night. Are you kidding? I can stay here all night. I don't have to be in the battle all going until tomorrow. Sunday, Saturday, we can stay here all day, baby. I don't want to leave. Stay here all day. Tonight, it's Jawad Williams coming up with the Monster 3. Extra overtime on the way. say it any better than Mike Patrick said it right there. There is just something magical about this rivalry, and now Jawad Williams has ensured that he will always be a part of the special moments in this rivalry. We're going to overtime here in Chapel Hill. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, what makes this rivalry or a rivalry so special? Well, first of all, it about great coaches. got a Hall of Famer and a future Hall of Famer. It involves great players. It involves competition. It involves teams nationally rated. It involves the number one team in America playing right here with 15 in a row and he bows a school with an incredible tradition here winning his coach in the history of basketball worked here Dean Smith who was the mentor to Roy Williams Mike Krzyzewski a Hall of Famer I mean it's got it all it's got everything beautiful uniforms players graduate I mean gorgeous cheerleaders what else do you want Chris Duhon is the only player in the game with four fouls the last time Duke and Carolina went overtime four years ago in this building and Duke won 90 to 86. Felton with a miss, rebound Jawad Williams. Felton will penetrate. Floater, no, and Felton's got it back again. He kept it alive after the penetration. He can't give a club four opportunities. Boy, Carolina looks like they got some jump right now. Although May missed the shot, and no call on Sheldon Williams. Well, Duke gets a lucky break right there, and if there's no score in that possession by North Carolina, Carolina, a couple offensive rebounds, good ball movement, but they could not capitalize. Chris Duhon trying to find a seam. Instead, he finds Williams and a foul. Created by that dribble penetration, which has been a trademark. It's been an unbelievable part of their offensive system for many a year. Alvin Scott with a foul. They're underway out of the kennel. The Zags with an early 6-0 lead. We're taking you there as soon as this one is done tonight here on ESPN2. And you stay tuned for that game because the Zags, to me, are one of the premier teams in America. They only lost two games, both to two undefeated teams. They lost to St. Joseph's, and they lost to Stanford. And against St. Joe's, they were without Mr. Turia. Bernie Turia, one of the special players in the country. David Noel into the game. Sean May out of the game for North Carolina. Sheldon Williams had a 14 in the first half and he continues to pile up the points now for Duke. Sheldon Williams with 22. Duke by two early here in overtime. You know, we're so far up here. You wonder why they went out of the lineup. Here's the camps. Remember a triple overtime game here in this building earlier this year, Dick, between Wake and Carolina. McCann's point is he tough. He's got the whole package offensively.
defensively. The jump shot, the post, and the mid-range game. Yeah, he really does. He covers all three points of the game, and he also covers, if you throw with the fourth, the transition game as well. 22 for McCann, so now Ewing is fouled on the drive. Ewing has really been aggressively offensively here tonight. But take a look right now. McCants is going to show, as my partner said, that medium-range jump shot. A jump shot that doesn't exist in many cases in college basketball. McCants sometimes, and you don't want this to come across as a negative, and McCants has taken some heat this year, but at times he looks like a guy who can do whatever he wants to out there. And that may, may be kind of the curse at times of being Rashad McCants because it's just not that easy. But, you know, he gets a little passive on the defensive end. He has to really make a little better commitment to there. Well, offensively, as you said, he's got the full back. He is a star. But well, there's no doubt about that. Leading scorer in the ACC. Ewing, one of two from the line. Duke by a point. 19 for Daniel Ewing. Ewing's got to stop penetration of Felton. Great pass on the inside. And Sheldon Williams with another block. The landlord responds again in that three-second area. Thou shalt not enter the lane. This is Bessie. What a game he has had tonight. What a game here tonight. Unbelievable. Number one, 15 in a row. Here they are. Lost five times out of 12 coming in number one Great. against Carolina. Loses it. Dang finds it and scores. Duke by three, 17 for Dang. And that's no accident where he was located on the floor. A good rebound in position. Ends up getting the ball and gets himself the layup. I'm really curious why May is out of yeah, the game. I agree with you. Because he's certainly not in foul trouble, nope. and we're in overtime right now. David Noel has been in in place of him early in the overtime and has stayed in for the last two minutes. You wonder if it's an injury factor. There's two fouls for May on the night. Shot clock, a real factor. Scott misses about a 28-footer. Not a good possession for North Carolina. No, not the kind of shot they want right there. As you look at May standing up. I tell you, if I went down on the floor, now I'm spinning across and want to know why he's out. Sean May trying to get the attention of Roy Williams, trying to get himself back in the game. Not to the bounce. It still belongs to Duke with 20 on the shot clock. He's like saying, Coach, Coach, yeah, get me remember in. Remember me? He says, okay, you can go back in. <laughs> And here comes the big guy, Noel, goes back out. Andy Katz down at floor level for us tells us that he needed a breather. In his opinion, he needed a little bit of rest. He is a big guy playing a ton of minutes. He's the only legitimate big guy for North Carolina. Well, he can go rest for all he wants tonight after the game. Ewing, a good look. Rebound McCants. And, and a silly foul, foul by Ewing. That is an absolute silly foul. We have seen Duke tonight make some plays defensively. You normally do not see a Mike Krzyzewski team make. Number four on Daniel Ewing. And it was shot of McCants to the line for the one and one. A 73% free throw shooter on the season. I tell you, it's amazing. Both these clubs, they take everybody's big hit because of the great tradition. I love these two schools. I love coming here for a game. North Carolina, great state university. I absolutely love it going out of Duke, one of the great private universities in America. And you know, the schools do it the right way. The one thing that always amazed me in Dean Smith's era is that they won, and they won with class, and they also won by going to class. <laughs> Good point. McCants makes the first. He's going to bring him within one. The 216th meeting between New Duke and North Carolina, dating all the way back to 1920. Can Carolina beat a number one ranked Duke team for the sixth time? Well, the sixth time since Mike Krzyzewski is coaching. One point lead Duke, 206 to go. The home. At the Kennel, Gonzaga, and Pepperdine, we're going to get you out there just as soon as Duke and Carolina are finished. Corey Violet, soft touch along the baseline. Zags up by nine in the early going. Undefeated Stanford, one of two perfect teams in the land, up by 20 at home over Arizona State. As we've mentioned, Arizona's coming in next, John. Reese, thank you very much. Duke only beaten once by Purdue back in November, trying to extend their winning streak to 16. Last 54 games, Duke and Carolina have met. 
27 Duke wins, 27 Carolina wins. 40 minutes, not enough to settle it here tonight. But with Duke 7 0 and 7 0 in the ACC, and Carolina 3 and 4 in the ACC, as you can see how even this rivalry has been over the years. You go back to Dean Smith, Mike Shashevsky, and so forth. But Carolina here at home, Carolina 3 and 4 in league play, Carolina more road games the rest of the way. I mean, this game means a ton to North Carolina tonight. Well, we said the same thing with Florida and Kentucky. You got to protect your home turf, especially in this league, because you don't win here in your North Carolina. You're staring at Wake Forest on the road Saturday and then on the road Tuesday to Georgia Tech. So now you're looking at a potential three game losing streak. And a three game losing streak would mean a three and seven mark wow. in the ACC. And that's not something that all these Carolina Blue folks were contemplating before the start of the season. Well, let me tell you this. They're saying right now, man, don't even think about that because we're coming out here and we're going to win this. And that's what those kids are thinking. And certainly Duke's thinking about we're going back to Durham with a W. It was a late three by Jawad Williams that sent the game to overtime. Each team has a timeout remaining. Two shots the rest of the way on the next foul. Both ways. Duke by one and with the arrow and with the ball. Again, that's the timeout during an overtime period. An extra timeout. Good position for Williams. Knocked away by McCants. Reddick for three. Felton collides with Duhon. No call. Carolina ball. Reddick had an opportunity. That would have really been a big one. And he knocked that three down. He has not hit any outside shots since the first half. The one bucket in the second half was on a driving layup. He hasn't had easy opportunities. They really seal it inside. Manuel couldn't get it inside. Oh, they missed him. They missed him. He was wide open. Now Felton finds him. May turned his body to the side. Didn't go up as strong as he sometimes does and couldn't finish. He tried to seal him off. He was anticipating the block shot. Here it is. Takes some time off the clock. Well, there got to be some tired guys on this floor right now. Well, these kids play a lot of minutes, man. Sometimes that, you know, you talk about Matt Shell. I think sometimes it's overrated. These kids can play all day long. The danger is foul trouble, and the danger is injury. Turnover, and Jackie Manuel wisely is going to slow it down. We're into the final minute of overtime. Carolina down by one. Duke with that typical man-to-man -man defense, pressure on the ball, get help off the ball. Belton, Jawad Williams, out of bounds to Carolina, 15 to shoot. That was an example again of giving help with the penetration. Get some motion, Roy Williams is saying, Mike Krzyzewski saying, tighten it up in the three-second area. Don't allow that penetration. And Roy Williams going to bring a very good shooter in, Melvin Scott. Good substitution here as Jackie Manuel goes out. Jackie Manuel has really done a phenomenal job yes, tonight, yes. offensively, but defensively, in really attacking J.J. Reddick. He really has done a great job taking away that perimeter jump shot. And if Carolina gets the lead, Manuel would come right back in to play some defense. Now Felton, he's got to get something going here in eight seconds. They got one of the premier point guards in America with the basketball. Trying to turn the corner on Ewing, he does. May is stretched. How many the shot pleasures. clock expires? Great job defensively by Duke in that possession. They've been a defensive dynamite team all year. Something wrong with Sean May, Dick. He's the one guy they can't afford to lose. He's their only post presence they have. He's got like cramps. I think he's got cramps. I think he's got cramps. He's hustling on his side. There's the deflection. He brought the ball down. He brought it into the. Now look at the hustle. Look at the scrap. Big, strong, makes like Julius Peppers going after That's a right. fumble. Peppers in the house here tonight. Yeah. May in a lot of pain, and he goes out as David Noel comes in. There he is. Mr. Peppers, what a year he's had. Also in the house, Jason Cable sitting right to his right. His brother Jeff is a young coach doing a great it, job at Old Dominion. It is cramp stick. You're right, the way they're working on it. May, by the way, has tied a career high with 21 rebounds here tonight. That's an unbelievable effort. 20 rebounds against anybody. This is against Duke, my friends. 21 off the glass. A tremendous performance by May. They're working on him yeah, in terms of the cramps. Keep him hydrated right now to work on him over on the bench. 
Look who's going to the free throw line. Yeah, the Look wrong guy. Free throw line. Carolina fan. Oh, you don't want him on the line if you're North Carolina. Big lead for Gonzaga early over Pepperdine, but to send you there as soon as this game is done is arguably, maybe not even arguably, the best, the best. free throw shooter in the country. No, arguably. Come <laughs> on, buddy. Oh, arguably. Hey, Mike Patrick, that, that ball game better be good out there because what a game my buddy's missed out here. Redick is 5 for 5 tonight, Dick. 74 for 76 this season. It's a one possession game. It's still a one possession game. You've got to match up defensively. They got some shooters on the floor. Well, McCance is one guy you got to try to find. Gets it off. Ties the game. He's the guy you got to find. He's made clutch shots all year. Just ask, just ask Chip Calhoun down there at Connecticut. They two in the last minute. 27 for McCants. Duhart's right in by Duhart. Here comes Felton. Four seconds Can to win it. Can they win it? Oh, what a game. Unbelievable. Duke gets out of here with 16 in a row. A really devastating loss for North Carolina. They got a day with Wade Forrest on the road. There's a lot of respect right there. You're looking at a future Hall of Famer and a Hall of Famer. A lot of emotion, passion, an incredible night. Beautiful evening. Lots of great fans here. Look at his drive right to the basket. Nobody gives help. Goes right to the goal. Gets the layup. And now they come back. They defend. Wow. That goes down. Alvin Woo. Scott had a decent look at it, but when it was all said and done, Dick, for the Duke Blue Devils, the leader, the oh. senior, the captain is the guy who won the game for them. And look how calm he is. Oh, he knows. He's inside. His wife, Mickey, jumps with joy at home. She said, that's my husband, baby. The reverse layup. I mean, nobody rotated over. Look at Ewing. He's made big plays tonight, baby. And look at the jubilation for the Duke Blue Devils, who have now won 16 in a row and are 19 and 1 in the season. Andy Katz is standing by with Chris Duhon. Chris, take me through that last possession. What did you see in the defense right there? Uh, Felton came up the pressure, and we was actually just trying to get the ball up the court so we could run a play. But I seen uh, they kind of half switched. They didn't talk well, and I just started attacking, and then it just opened up, and thank God I made the layup. What has made this team so composed in late game situations? Uh, it has to be our coach. I mean, we have, he has all the faith in us. He just told us to go out there and play. We stopped running plays and just told us had all the confidence in the world for us to make plays. And uh, we just we just feed off of him. It's your last time here at the Dean Dome. How does this one rate? Uh, it's the best. I mean, it's an amazing game. I thought we were about to add another five more minutes up there. But thank God we did because I'm cramping up right now. But they're an amazing team, and uh, we have one more against them. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Back to you, Dan. All right, Andy, thank you very much. North Carolina tied it late in regulation, tied it late in the overtime. Duhon wins it for the Blue Well, Cubs. experience. You got the experienced player, Chris Duhon, making the big play, attacking the basket. Duke leaves here number one in America, Mr. Schulman. Duke's won 16 in a row as they win in overtime. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Pepperdine, Gonzaga, Terry Gannon, and Jimmy Dykes take it away. Side to side, make the defense shift out of alignment a little bit. And we welcome those of you that uh, just watched a great game. Duke and North Carolina, rivalry on Tobacco Road. Duke with the win, but here, rivalry week. Presented by Cisco Systems, continues with a West Coast Conference rivalry. Pepperdine taking on Gonzaga, and to this point, it has been... Welcome to the Budget Rent-A-Car Halftime Report. And the cattle, Pepper and I, not making many waves in the first half. 50 to 36, number eight tags with the 14-point lead. Earlier tonight on Throwdown Thursday, the premier rivalry in all of college basketball. Duke and North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Duke rolling in as the number one team in the land. Roy Williams, so he's faced Duke and Krzyzewski before. This first time, obviously, he's head coach of the Heels. And Duke got off to a terrific early start. Duhon finding Daniel Ewing. Devils up by 11 early. J.J. Reddick, bottom. He was only two of nine from behind the arc. Duke lead had been chopped down to four in the early second half. Rashad McCants following his own and his cut to two. And then Raymond Felton would go to Juwan Williams. 
Raymond Felton quicker end to end than almost any player in the country. I thought his pushing of the ball in the second half was a huge key in North Carolina taking the lead. And McCants, who dropped 27 on the Devils, gave Carolina its first lead of the night. Blue out, dang. 17 points on the night. Duke back on top. Here's Felton. Baseline again. Strong using his body. Carolina on top by two. And then Felton. See the three. Be the three. To feel the momentum changing. Carolina had control with Steen until Reddick went inside Steve. Struggled overall from behind the three-point line, but steps up when it's most needed for the big shot. Did you say step up? How about Jawad Williams? Tied it at 74. We went to overtime. Rashad McCants tied it then at 81 in overtime. And Coach K didn't call timeout. A key here, Coach K didn't call timeout so that North Carolina couldn't set up their defense. Did the same thing in regulation. Duke didn't get a good shot. The faith that he showed in his team was the difference. Chris Duhon goes all the way. And that ultimately was the game winner as Melvin Scott couldn't get it to go at the end of the ballgame. Duke goes into Chapel Hill, 83-81 to the final. Sheldon Williams had 22, 11 rebounds and 5 blocks. Sean May, 15 points and 21 rebounds in a losing effort. And the Devils, Mike Krzyzewski, walk in and they're 8-0 in the ACC. They play both teams played at a at a level at an energy level that I'm not sure I'm not sure there was a there's been a game this year anywhere that matched that level. There's just too many great things going on out there, and people they're playing D, we're playing D, and we can't stop them. They can't stop us. Then you do stop them, and you know. Duke is now five and zero on the road in the ACC. The rest of the league has six road wins combined. They are dominating the league again. Well, they expect to win when they step on the road, and they faced an, a, a tremendous challenge from this North Carolina team. You know, North Carolina coming into this ballgame was giving up 51% field goal defense. That's last in the ACC. They've not really been guarding particularly well in ACC games, but in this ballgame, they held Duke to 33% shooting in the second half. North Carolina proved they could guard, but at the end of the ballgame, when Carolina made their surge, Duke showed, I thought, greater maturity at the end of the game, and you have to give a ton of credit to Krzyzewski for sticking with his team, not calling that timeout at the end, even though it didn't work at the end of regulation where they didn't get the shot they wanted. They stuck to their guns, he stuck to his guns, and his team responded. Yeah, well, as you know better than anyone, he's done that his entire career. Didn't allow the defense to get set in a scattered floor against the North Carolina team that was tired. They have a short bench, fatigue's a factor, and the speed of Duke, obviously, late in the game, a critical factor. I also think that Mike Krzyzewski and his staff deserve a lot of credit tonight for attacking North Carolina where they're weak. Jay touched on it. The Tar Heels have struggled defensively. They lack the foot speed. They did not pick their feet up or move their feet defensively to contain dribble penetration. And also they are slow in rotations in terms of help side defense. And that's where Duke continually was able to get inside through shot fakes and dribble penetration inside of the shell of North Carolina. And Jay made a good point. They played better defense tonight, but not good enough. And the balance Duke showed, getting the ball inside to Sheldon Williams, Luol Dang. Williams had 22 points, 12 rebounds, and five blocks. He was a monster inside when J.J. Redick was held down a little bit by Jackie Manuel and Melvin Scott. I think that's a great sign, too, the fact that uh, when you look at uh, Redick not having a great night and Duke goes on the road and finds a way to win, uh, that shows that maybe in a tournament game or somewhere down the road, uh, he may be off, but they still can manufacture a win because other people step up. Ewing was big tonight for 19 points, 4 of 9 from behind the three-point line, so that neutralized or offset Redick having an off night. All right, let's look at the big picture now. Nobody's suggesting that Carolina's not going to make the tournament or anything like that. They're 3-5 and five in the ACC. They have missed a lot of opportunities at home. They haven't won a road game in the conference yet, and they've got four big ones coming up on the road. They do. They, they play Georgia Tech and Wake Forest on the road. I think the problem is they're not only 3-5, and five, they've had five home games the first round the ACC they got to go five on the road and that's going to be very difficult because as you mentioned road wins have been hard to find in the ACC well it sounds like a broken record obviously the most talented starting five in the country uh, North Carolina has that's why they're capable of beating a UConn or playing Duke into overtime but either uh, they're gonna have to change tempos at time or develop a couple players on the bench to extend the bench in the rotation a little bit because fatigue continues to be a factor they lose overtime games if Carolina had been able to pull this one off perhaps we would have had a new number one team when the new poll comes out Stanford remaining perfect. We'll tell you exactly how they did it and what's on the horizon for the Cardinal when we come back after this.